I think it was my parents who started collecting books for me when I was a little girl. Um, books are important to them. We all we had we were privileged to have books around us, me and my brother growing up. And I have happy memories of reading books together with my parents and being allowed to choose books to buy things that I wanted to read. So I think uh, my book collecting uh, started in childhood thanks to my parents. I don't think it's black and white. What is a Jewish book? But I was thinking about that, that uh, what makes something a Jewish book? I think certainly books about Jewish folklore or Jewish religious texts or history having to do with the culture of a whole lot of people. I guess that it's fair to say that those are Jewish books. I would say that it, the Jewish Jewish author's work kind of automatically has influence. It could be a Jewish book, even if the if the content is not explicitly Jewish. I think that for sure the perspective comes from the author's lived experience as a Jewish person. Person, So I guess those would count as Jewish books in my mind. Sometimes a work strikes me as having a Jewish feel or a Jewish sensibility, and that's a little more subjective. This can be due to certain images or subjects having to do with Jewish history, or sometimes it's just something that I feel an echo with in terms of my own experience as a Jewish person. I guess one example of that would be the author Olga Tokarczuk, who is Polish. I don't believe she's Jewish, but she she writes novels that have a lot about Jewish culture in Poland. It's interesting how she teaches me through her books about the cultural exchange that, that went on in Poland but for centuries between Jewish population and the non-Jewish people living there. I have a lot of Yiddish language books because I've been wanting to learn a bit the language that is part of my family history. Of course, it's not it's not the only Jewish language, but it's one of them. And uh, so I have uh, dictionaries and a few textbooks and a couple of uh, uh, three or four books written in Yiddish that that I'm learning that I'm able to read, but slowly. I have also some art books or graphic novels. I think maybe my artsy background leads me to gravitate towards those kinds of books. Well, having them or reading them, reading them for sure is important to me, just for feeling, for learning about my history for reading about other kinds of Jewish experiences. So I think it's important to remember that uh, there's so a huge diversity of Jewish experiences. So I can feel a kinship with other Jewish experiences, but also I can recognize that many of them are very different than mine. In terms of having my own collection of books that I've purchased, I think that is important too, um, if, if you're able to. Just maybe because personal, individual collections can be protected maybe in different ways than institutions like libraries. And so if you're thinking like over, like long term, over many generations, um, I think there, there's a, well, I guess there's a way that Jewish texts and books have been preserved that is thankfully not related to institutions, which is how they've survived for such a long time, in different climates that are less friendly to Jewish people. So I don't necessarily think like that for my own books, given where I live and privilege and a lot of reasons, although your question is making me thinking about it. So it does make me realize that, yeah, I'm, I am glad to have a certain number of books that represent Jewish art, Jewish history, Jewish stories, um, and maybe my potential children will keep them. Maybe they'll just donate them somewhere else. Who knows? <laughs> I have this book by Charlotte Solomon, who was a painter, Jewish painter who lived in Berlin. And actually, my I did a micro grant for the 
the Jewish Museum, and it was it's, my project was on her. She made a, uh, about a thousand gouache paintings over the course of one summer when she was in hiding in the south of France. And it's loosely autobiographical, but she changes names um, a little bit, so you don't you're not sure if it's a hundred percent true, but for sure it's based on her life up until when she made the work. I think that the images are really striking and there's there is text as well, but I would say that the images are like the main the main thing. And then she also references a lot of music in the book. And I brought another book by Myra Coleman. I think my favorite books right now are are the ones that have paintings in them or images. I like that combination I think of images and text and I'm drawn to, I'm drawn to graphic novels or other books that maybe aren't defined as graphic novels, but they kind of work in a similar way. Like Charlotte Sullivan's work is from 1943, I think. So maybe, I don't know if, if the genre of graphic novel was really a thing back then. I, I would tend to say no. So you could say that she was like one of the first people to start combining right. images and, and a story. Um, Myra Coleman is working today and this is her latest book, which is called Women Holding Things. And it's very poetic, light on text as well, because the images really say a lot, I find. It talks about not just big things in Jewish history, it also reminds you that it's the everyday habits, the individual people, and I think that's something important to me. And comforting kind of and and she noted Myra Coleman notices all these details and she is somewhat talking about her family but not exclusively this one page is called potatoes and there's a nice picture of a pot of potatoes that she has painted my grandmother was an orphan when she wanted to marry the man she fell in love with his parents thought she was not good enough for him and offered her his brother the brother was the man she married, and he was my grandfather. My grandfather was not as cunning or successful as his brother. He was a devout man who prayed every day. We loved him. I don't know if he ever spoke to me. I don't remember a single word. But he was a kind presence and looked down at me from a great height. Or I was very small, which I was. He only wore white shirts and black pants, unless he was working. Then he wore white shirts and khaki pants. He ended up working for his brother, who may have swindled him out of his rightful earnings. There is some discussion about that in the family. He loved to eat potatoes, but the doctor said he should not. So he snuck them and burnt the pan, and my grandmother found out and everyone knew. So I would say yes, but no, it's not the, not the only the only way. Oral history, I think, is more important than we sometimes give it credit for, at least in the Western perspective where it's like writing and reading literacy is, is somehow considered to have more weight than stories that have been passed down. But I think that's an unfair hierarchy. But I do think that books are part of it and it's important. You know, it's important in our culture and it's, it is a way to have a record, have a historical record if you think long enough in the future. And, uh, Maybe combined with oral history, it, it makes a good, a rich uh, record of a culture or a person, even just a person. What books they had, what stories did they tell that then your grandmother told that then you heard.